Oh, hi, it's New Year's Eve, everyone. I think we're ready. We've got some guests. Here they are. We've all got a cheeky drink, lovely party things. Oh. Yes. Uh, the audience, I believe, is ready. There they are. <laughs> lovely. I think we've got everything. Oh, wait, no, I'm a fool. I always... There's no Tom Hanks. I forgot oh. the Tom Hanks. Oh. How can we have New Year's Eve without Tom Hanks? Where is Tom Hanks? Oh, where is he? Oh. I am. Oh. Oh. Did you all have a nice Christmas? Did you? Did you? Yeah. <laughs> it goes by so fast, doesn't it? <laughs> so at New Year's Eve, ladies and gentlemen, the time of year for parties, isn't it? You know, whether it's a great big party or a party that's a bit smaller than you were hoping for. Mm. <laughs> and uh, everyone hates you. It's the time of year when you sit down and update your CV for that new job you'll be looking for, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> New Year's resolutions, but what to cut down on? You know, eating, drinking, <laughs> lying. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Uh, but mostly, it's the time of year, isn't it, where you want to spend time with family. Yeah. Just make sure you don't get stuck next to the creepy uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we... I know, no. They're not watching, but fine. We've got a host of stars for you tonight, so uh, let's get some guests on! <laughs> and later, we'll be meeting one of this year's standout acting talents, Stephen Graham will be joining us. <laughs> Newly recrowned world heavyweight boxing champion, Anthony Joshua will be here. <laughs> and we have music from Melanie C featuring Sink the Pink. <laughs> yes, we will. But first, as she starred in Midsummer, The Little Drummer Girl, and Fighting With My Family, and is set to be one of the major faces of 2020, please welcome Florence Pugh, everybody! Oh, she dazzles, dazzles! Look at you, you look, oh, you look like a professor. Hello, hello. Come in, sit down. Thank you. Florence Pugh, everybody! Hi! Following another triumphant series of Strictly Come Dancing, please welcome uh, this year's new judge, it's the fabulous Motsi Mabusi! We've the two stars of the critically acclaimed A Beautiful Day in the Neighbourhood. Uh, one is the Welsh actor behind Brothers and Sisters and the Americans. It is Matthew Reese, everybody! Hello. Hello, Hello sir. Nice to see you. Thank you very much. And he's the double Oscar winning star of Forrest Gump, Apollo 13, Castaway and Toy Story, and one of the biggest movie stars in the world. Please welcome Mr. Tom Hanks! <laughs> One welcome all. How nice. Thank you for spending New Year's Eve with us. <laughs> yes. Thank you for having yeah. us. Did you all have a nice Christmas? Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> best present, Tom. What was your best present? Uh, I got an instant pot. You know what an instant pot no, is? No, I don't. I made a vow to learn how to cook my own meals, and an instant pot is an electronic device uh, that you can do things like put in a loaf of bread, some ground beef, a bucket of water, and 20 minutes later, you have steak and kidney pie. <laughs> Out of pops, and it's delicious. Isn't America marvelous? It is. <laughs> We're way ahead of you people in many ways. We really are. Uh, now, uh, Motsi, yeah. you know, people go to parties on mm -hmm. New Year's Eve. Do you avoid a dance floor, or do you go out and just show off and go to watch no, this? No, no, no. I, I avoid it. I love to watch people dancing. Really, it's the most entertaining thing on the planet. And uh, the more alcohol comes in, the better it gets. <laughs> so I really love that. And after I have a few drinks, I dance. But I, I, I never dance like, yeah, yeah. Well, drink up, Motsi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I'm laughs> yeah. Now, what's weird is, I, I assumed that Matthew, Matthew Reese, 
you would be drinking the wine because you are a wine expert. Yes, I tell everyone. I am a wine expert. Do you know this? He is a wine expert. I didn't even tell you that, but I am, I am officially one of Wales's greatest leading authorities on wine. Wow. Yeah. How many wine experts are there in Wales, actually? Two. Two? <laughs> <laughs> no, you host a show. I do, I do. I host a show. Well, I try and host a show called the, called the Wine... Ironically, called The Wine Show, which with, <laughs> with Matthew Good. Look, there he is, dashing Matthew oh, Good. Oh, my Lord. And he very kindly oh. called me up one day and said, look, do you want to travel around Italy with a wine master and he'll tell us everything about wine? Um, they just need two monkeys who, you know, who love wine but know nothing about it to be informed. And I was one of those. But there's not much of a spittoon involved. You do just go for it. Well, Italy was tricky because apparently, I don't even know if this is true, but the Italians told us, unlike France, where the, when tasting wine they spit, the Italians insist that you take two long draughts. The first should clear the palate and the second you taste the wine. <laughs> so by about 9.30 a.m. <laughs> yes. The producer is saying, stop saying it's nice. You have to come <laughs> I buy this at Christmas. You, like, say something else. You got paid for this job? I got, I got paid. No, I, I'm so jealous. I have, I have very little memory. That's, that's a trip I want to book. <laughs> you're welcome on the next series. Uh, now, Florence Pugh, you're having a special New Year's Eve because you like someone on the couch. Oh, oh, I know, I, I do. I mean, I like all of you on the couch. Don't lie. <laughs> you like one more than the other. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I particularly love the sound of Tom Hanks' voice. Oh, my. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm... This? Yeah, that. <laughs> hey, that's great! <laughs> no, my mum my actually reminded me this morning. She found out that you were here, and um, she said, do you remember... Because I was sick quite a lot as a, as a kid. And I was always in hospital, and they were always trying to find a good position for me to sleep in. And um, apparently, I would always wake up when Toy Story was over and the ending credits Aww. would play. So she'd quickly get up from her bed and rewind it and press play again. Aww. So I'm, I've been very soothed well, you know to what? sleep. You got a friend Aww. in me. <laughs> you got a friend in me. <laughs> well, there you go. Okay, assume the position. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, now, here we are. <laughs> Let's begin with our wonderful, wonderful feel-good film at the start of the new year. A Beautiful Day in the Neighbourhood is the name of the film. It opens on the 31st of January. And uh, I suppose, Matthew, we should say that this is really... It's the story of your character, who's a journalist. Well, that's what I tell everyone. It's my story. <laughs> <laughs> I know Tom Hanks is in the film, but ultimately it's my story. That's how I pitched it to everyone. <laughs> but it's true, isn't it? Yes, of course it's true. Yeah, because it's, yeah. it's based on a, an article that a journalist wrote. It, it is. It's based on a... a, a a true moment in time when a, a journalist, uh, Esquire journalist, interviewed this incredible American icon, uh, played by Tom Hanks, ironically, American icon, um, <laughs> uh, uh, a children's entertainer, for want of a better word, uh, called Mr. Rogers, who for many decades um, had a, a very informative, incredibly important show on, on American television mm. that uh, shaped a number of Generations, because yeah. because Tom, presumably in America, when you tell people I'm playing Mr. Rogers, everyone just oh, laughs. everybody knows, yeah, yeah. A, but here, it takes a bit more explaining. <laughs> it does. A children's entertainer doesn't quite cover it. I mean, how do you explain who Mr. Rogers was? Mr. Rogers was on television. He didn't teach kids how to read. He did teach them how to spell. He didn't teach them how to add. He taught them how to be decent people who could communicate and understand their own feelings, as well as know that they will not get sucked down the drain of the bathtub when they pull the plug at the end of it. Which, yes. if you're two and a half years old, you might think can actually happen. We had Timmy Mallet. Who <laughs> 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 remembers Timmy Mallet? He's if here you, tonight. If you, were to, <laughs> if you were to give Mr. Rogers a lot of amphetamine and a foam mallet, that would be Timmy <laughs> Mallet. Because <laughs> you, as a kid, you didn't get it. Oh, Tom. I thought it, I was 11 by the, when he first came on. I thought, this show's stupid. <laughs> Slow and the puppets' mouths don't move, and <clears throat> this this is what most of the show was when I was 11 years old. A grown man looking right down the barrel and saying, "Feelings are funny things, aren't they? <laughs> Sometimes it's sad." Pause. Pause. <laughs> And it's okay to be sad. I said, what is this? Change the channel. <laughs> I want to see Batman. I want to see somebody punching a guy out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but listen, we've got a clip. Uh, this is Matthew's character, uh, meeting Robert. <laughs> 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 Ironically, that was the first time we met. We actually met during that. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I did have to Google what play the plate was. 
I oh, really? Was, yeah, you didn't get the baseball reference. I, I'm, not, I'm not that fast. I, I could have said, oh, did you get hit with the googly? Yeah, that would have been <laughs> yeah, an apology. But, but there is a kind of thing, and it's your character in the film, I suppose, where you, you can't quite believe that Mr Rogers isn't somehow a, a fake or a, that, it's, that it's real. Well, I think, yeah, I think my character certainly, ha you know, there lived life from not even a, a cup half empty, there, there was no cup. So he's, he is kind of looking for the darkness and everything. And he did, in, in a sense, kind of look for, for the other side of Mr. Rogers. And, and the irony was, you know, he only, he only saw the good side. Yeah, because there, found. there was no side to Mr. Rogers, was there, Tom? Well, he was a cracked vessel, but he would say that, uh, I'm just like you, I, I have failings and I have worries, but never mind about me. I, Graham, I would imagine that having the pressures of a television show like this come on week <laughs> after week is going to be something that could wear you down after a while. Yes. Well, <laughs> I can only apologize, Mr. Roger. <laughs> <laughs> we were always exhausted at the end of some of these scenes yeah. because we're, we were like, you know, stallions, action and rolling. We're ready to do it as fast as possible. And instead, Mari Heller, our boss on this, she, the director, she was always saying, no, no, slower, slower. So <laughs> that's the opposite of what directors say. To yeah. And the odd thing, too, is because he made programs for children, you, you think that somehow his messages are going to be very simple, but there's profound. He was like a philosopher. Oh, he was, he was a, a, a king. Uh, they, there's, a, there's a number of episodes it is, like, <laughs> it starts with a goldfish is dead in the tank. And uh, the entire half hour will leave you in tears by the time he's done with it. His desire was to always have people share their feelings. And he w would write songs, and he would he would we'd be sitting there and say, you know, uh, I was really sad for a while, but I found it was good to talk about it because the music will start playing it because it's good to talk, it's good to say the things we feel, it's good to talk. You know, now every man, every married man, should have that in his pocket because when you're having a fight at three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> in which most of your vocabulary is, oh, let me get this straight. <laughs> oh, 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 I see, I see. You can be as angry as you want to with the love of your life, and you can just then end it with, well, you know what, you know what? It's good to talk. <laughs> it's good to say the things we do. And all you're doing is communicating your feelings, and buddy, that's a victory. <laughs> it gets to a point. It gets to a point. I've done it several times, works very well. <laughs> then there's like the fourth, fifth time where you take the inhalation. You go. She goes. You sing that. Song. <laughs> <laughs> that will nail you to the wall. I'm not saying overuse it. I'm just no, saying have it in I your pocket. I know. Four times in a day is over you. <laughs> but on, on, on New Year's Eve, I think there's a lovely thing to share with him. The, his is the three secrets to happiness. Oh, the three secrets to happiness are: be kind, be kind, and be kind. He was, I think that's the thing about the, the movie, is that he is proactively a source of, uh, an agent of change, because kindness is not the default setting that humanity seems to be in. Conflict is bitterness, sarcasm, uh, what's the, the, the cynicism. There wasn't a cynical bone in his body, and he said, you will be amazed how your world will be changed just by simply understanding that somebody else is probably having a worse day than you are. Yeah. So, be kind. Well, it's one of those things, it's sort of, you know, when a, a film comes along that you need, <laughs> a beautiful day in the neighbourhood is that, and it opens on uh, 31st of January. Uh, now, uh, one of the bright spots... Of, yes, give me one. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, no, it's you. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no. Oh, you're so kind. Oh, <laughs> One of the bright spots of 2019 was meeting uh, Motsi Mabusi. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Before we, we talk, uh, here's, a, here's a little uh, <laughs> reminder of uh, the joys of <laughs> Strictly <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> 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 
Do you remember? I, mean, I don't know who that is. Uh, Who's that yeah. person? Uh, did, did any of you watch Strictly? Did you? Are you all working, right? I, I was there. I think I'm on the. <laughs> I think I'm one of the guys on the end of that. Uh, looks and I think like you, a... you've got a technical question for Motsi. Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> all right. Now I understand. What is the difference between a nine and a ten? Well. Okay. None. It, ten, being <laughs> ten being perfect. Nine being almost perfect. Almost let's, perfect. Let's put it that way. So you could literally turn a nine into a negative comment. You know, buddy? Yes. You are almost perfect. <laughs> <laughs> then, has there ever been anybody who got a two? Well, in Germany, yes. That's quite uh, normal. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> right. What, a, what, a, what I... a mark of shame that must be. Can you yeah. imagine? You know, the next day, ah! It was, oh, look at you, number two. Number two. Run away, hide your head in shame. Number two. You no, know, in Germany, one of the judges actually took a marker and wrote minus one. Did they, did they kill someone? <laughs> no, you know, I mean, you have to. Sh he wanted to show how not good the dance how bad was. It was. Yeah. Well, Marty, Marty, now I have to say, because what I love about your story is an amazing one. So there were these three sisters mm -hmm. in, living in South Africa, and you fell in love with ballroom dancing. Yes. But but no one around you was ballroom dancing, nothing. No, we were on holiday and we saw ballroom dancing and I said to my mom, that's what I want to do. And uh, we didn't even have a hall, so we went to her kindergarten and they cleared it up and she found a friend that could do ballroom dancing and she taught us the basics. And uh, I said that quite German, right? The basics. Basic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we learned that and it was like uh, fire. We were just infected. And like... But as good as you got, you would then enter the competitions and it wouldn't go well. Yes, shame. Yeah, we entered the competitions quite a few times, actually, and we were quite a few times last place. But we learned, we got better, we practiced, we improved everything. We got the dance shoes, we got the clothes, and we just kept on dancing, and somehow, yeah, somehow... Did you we ever went... get a negative one? <laughs> no! <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, but now, here's an odd thing. It's uh, Motsi's first series, and her sister won. Um, I, I, uh, I know. How fortuitous. Uh, that is, uh, that is just great, isn't it? That's more, the best more scandal thing. at the BBC. Yes. <laughs> well, the thing is, and what I loved, because, you know, you, it might get too hot, but the last show, everybody votes. So I was like, the last show, I'm Mother Christmas, hand out those tens, uh. and the, let the UK decide, and they did. And is it by telephone vote? Is that yes. what it is? Yes, yeah, telephone vote. Yeah. Yes. Wow. So yeah. they... I didn't think they're going to win, to be honest. But, <laughs> yeah, didn't. no! Because you never know what's going to go. So I prepared her. I was like, Sister dear, be prepared for everything. You know, whatever happens. Like, I, would, I planned, if she wins, I come one day to the UK. If she loses, I'll come two days to the UK, like, back and just console her, bring the baby. It makes her feel good. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I did that. Yeah, look after my baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Losing, losing yeah. wasn't that bad. Yes. If you're the baby, yeah. you feel better about yourself. So, yeah. you know, the thing is about my baby, like, when she falls, she gets up and she pats me. So I don't know, because she feels like mommy has a lot of pain. So I was like, she'll make you feel better. Aww. But, uh, yeah. yeah. And, and now, because, Matthew, you are not keen on dancing. Hate dancing, I'm sorry Why? It's just not in my body. No. I was not born to punish people with my well, dancing. Can you tell if someone can dance? Well, I think you can tell from the posture of their body and the way they talk and express themselves if they can dance. And I think we've got really good dancers on the couch here. See, Matthew? Yes. You huh? could dance. Yes, Matthew. Yes, you could probably be the first I can ever see. to say Matthew that. Matthew. No. <laughs> I can dance, damn it. I just need an opportunity. <laughs> Billy Elliot, too. <laughs> but, no, but, but look to your left, because Florence Pugh, you grew up in the world of dance. Yeah. I don't want to boast too much. Um, no, my mum was a dancer, you so yeah. all of the kids see? were in ballet classes. But I wouldn't say it's in my bones. It's not. It's not. Did something... you compete? Kind of. Not properly, though. Sort of. I started till I was about 16, 17. You see, she's a dick. Were you in a nutcracker performance? <laughs> <laughs> no, but actually, it's the one skill that I really love 
having have learned since I was younger because every single film that I've ever done has needed some sort of movement. yeah movement in some mm. some ways. So it's it's a skill that I'm happy my mum my mum got us into. And now, is an odd thing in terms of you know T Tom Hanks? You've done so much in films, but have you ever danced? Have you done full out dancing? I, I, in a film? I, we don't need to scare the children. <laughs> <laughs> But is it a, is it a, have you decided, do you, if dancing's in a script, do you go, no, I... Hey, now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm capable of essentially doing the, the, you know, the dance in the corner at the wedding, which okay. isn't really dancing, it's just sort of like rhythmic stomping. Yeah. You know, <laughs> stand up. I mean, any, any guy can essentially do this at a wedding. That's it. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh. Oh. Hey. Hey. Goes along, goes along yeah. with any music, any era. Mm -mm. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's, That's talent. Rhythm. That's, That's talent. it. It's almost a perfect ten. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take a nine, but uh, <laughs> there's no negative one, please. Um, but now, so you, are you coming back, though? You're in it to, for now, forever. Well, I, they haven't said anything to me, the BBC, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for that call. <laughs> Again. <laughs> No, yeah, well, I have to see. I had a lot of fun, and it was completely different. I mean, people are so, like, in this country, they are so intense about Strictly Come Dancing. Yes. Like, they're just like, they'll kill you, and I'm like, whoa! <laughs> you know, and I was happy to fly to Germany to have, like, a cool-off, and then come back, and then, yeah. Well, listen, we hope you're back for 2020. Uh, Monty Babusi, everybody! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like you're like a competitor. The number's on the screen now. <laughs> <laughs> For Motsi, please call. <laughs> what happens if the sister in, is invited back? Oh, I know. She's not. No. That would be bad. She would bring the baby and... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm able to cheer you up. Uh, OK, uh, another movie tonight. Uh, and again, a fantastic reaction to this. It's Greta Gerwig's new version of Little Women. It opened on Boxing Day, and I believe, Florence, it's broken every box office record already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Queuing all night. I it seems know. incredible. Yeah. yeah. Fist fights in Leicester <laughs> yeah. Square. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but now, Little Women is one of those things. Like we all know the story of Little Women, don't we, Tom? Yeah, absolutely. I pretend I do. <laughs> <laughs> there, are, there are three books that everybody pretends they milk mostly guys. Yes. Well, I pretend that I know Little Women, yeah. Jane Eyre, and Pride and Prejudice. Yeah. <laughs> I've now... never read a word of any of them, <laughs> <laughs> and I pretend I have. It is lovely. Yeah. <laughs> well, you should do, because it is lovely. It is. What huh. is it about? Um, <laughs> lots of little... Teeny, tiny... <laughs> teeny, tiny, itty... How can Reese genuinely thought uh, that? I did. That <laughs> email. Yeah, it's always like the borrowers. <laughs> tiny email. <laughs> Um, no, so Louisa May Alcott uh, wrote the book, um, and... Yes, of course. Yes, of course, and it's been going around for a while, and there's been lots of, lots of versions, and it's about these four sisters living in Concord, um, and they are all amazing artists, and they're all constantly struggling in a world that's built for men. Um, and oh. Greta Gerwig... <laughs> Fiction, then. <laughs> yeah. And Greta Gerwig has directed her version, and, um, I mean, it's, this cast was utterly unbelievable. So it's, it's uh, Saoirse Ronan, Emma Watson, uh, Eliza Scanlon, and yourself as the four yes, sisters. Yes, yes. And uh, you play Amy. I play Amy March, yeah, the youngest one. Who is... Is, am I right in saying this is the character that Greta Gerwig has kind of toyed with the most? Well, not toyed with. I, Amy March has had a really bad rep. Everybody absolutely hates her. And when I when I got the role, I told my friends, and my friend was like, "Oh, I hate her." <laughs> it's like, Great. Um, <laughs> so Greta kind of just pulled out this woman that is in the book. Amy March is an amazing artist in the book, and she just kind of gave her more of a more of a, a, a moment to understand her, and um, people are shocked by it. Well, we've got a clip. This is Amy kind of explaining her attitude yeah. to, to Matt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my job. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, that was Timothy Chalamet, and you'd met Timothy Chalamet before this, hadn't you? Oh, God. I had met him about a year previous. Uh, we, were, we were doing the, the kind of award season rounds together, and I loved his surname, Chalamet, 
and I every time I read it, I read it as Shalamala Bing Bong. <laughs> <laughs> and when I saw him at this event, someone was coming to introduce me, and I said in my head, I was like, Timothy Shalamala Bing Bong. <laughs> as I was walking towards him, to the point where it's now become such a name in my family that my grand met him last week at, at uh, however many weeks ago. <laughs> and after she came up, she was like, I met Timothy Shalamala Bing Bong. <laughs> Uh, so, Timothy Shalamala Bing Bong, yeah. but also uh, Meryl Streep. Yeah. I mean, you're share like you have I, scenes with I, Meryl Streep. I shared space with her. <laughs> <laughs> no, we shared a carriage for a whole day and a room for a whole day. It was. And does Greta Gerwig, does she give you a little pep talk beforehand? Kind of, <laughs> you're going to be in a carriage with Meryl Streep. <laughs> you know, does, does anyone prepare you for it? No, you kind of just know that she's she's in the room or she's somewhere in the house um, because everybody's on best behaviour and everybody lights really quickly and everybody sets up cameras very quickly because Meryl's around. So you always can tell that she's somewhere. And didn't you say that, that when you were uh, doing an outside scene, like she has this power, she speaks and things happen? <laughs> oh, she's... <laughs> We were in a carriage for a long time and it takes a while to reset shots because we were in horses, we were behind horses and it took about 20 minutes each time. And it was cold and we were in Boston and Timmy came up and kind of jumped up on the carriage and just as he jumped up on the carriage, a waft of uh, chip smell came in and she suddenly then wanted chips. And within about, I'd say, 10 minutes, there was a gasping PA, like... <gasps> <laughs> with that Wendy's fries ready to give to her. So I sat in a, in a carriage dripping in my fine clothes, um, eating Wendy's fries. There's with with photographic, <laughs> photographic evidence. <There> you are. <laughs> 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 it was delicious. It was. Yeah. Now, the, Matthew, you know, you're the star of this movie. Did you. You know, did you use your powers for for good? Are are you? <laughs> yes. Well, I'm known. I'm known for that. I'm known <laughs> for using my. I would occasionally offer someone a cappuccino or two on 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 set. Yeah. But um, I was cowed by Mr. Hanks. He, he was Martini see. Boy on Friday night. Oh, yes. Oh, that's a good and thing. And thankfully, yeah. my name is Martini, so it worked <laughs> out. Very well. I shall make martinis because that is my name. <laughs> but uh, Tom Hanks out nice you. You can't out <laughs> nice hacks. <laughs> no one I'd like to say I was kind and then I was kind and then I was kind. Every time I bought like the hair makeup department a coffee, he'd be like, I I've, oh. I've got a cinema for everyone if anyone likes to make it. <laughs> There's lottery tickets for there everyone. Is, there's, there's, one, there's one thing I do at the beginning of every film. I invest in a very good espresso and steamer for the hair and makeup trailer. Oh. And it sits right there, and whoever wants it at the end of the, of the shoot can take it with them. Wow. Because you must have legal, addictive stimulants yeah. in the hair and makeup. <laughs> you, also took, you also took everyone to a baseball game before we started. Oh, we did as well. Oh, yes, there was that. Okay, well, so, no, but that's, that's pleasing a, a crew. But movie stars also please fans. And uh, I've heard you tell a story about Rob Reiner. And I think, were you going to Disneyland or Disney World? Disneyland? Okay. This, was, this, was, this was so surreal. Neither one of us could breathe it. Long ago, Rob Reiner and we took our kids to Disneyland, the whole family. The kids were little. And as we're coming back, we're stuck in traffic on the 405, and we're going very slowly, but I'm driving and Rob is in the shotgun seat. And there's one of the buses that takes people to and from the airport. Oh, yeah. And because they will get stuck in traffic a lot, they show movies on screens in, in, this, uh, in the bus. Oh, okay. And so we're stuck, we're going back and forth, and we look on this bus that's right next to us in the other lane and said, um... Sleepless in Seattle is playing in that bus. <laughs> Rob and I were both in Sleepless in Seattle, and we're looking at this thing, and there's a guy who's kind of looking at it like this, and we say, oh, my God, they're almost up to our scene, where we have a talk at a coffee shop. And I said, oh, my God, the, there's our scene. Our scene is on in that bus. So I tooted the horn, and the guy who was like, look at this, he just kind of goes... <laughs> I always wonder, what did that guy tell the wife when he got home? <laughs> How was the flight, honey? The flight was nothing but this bus drive. Oh, <laughs> my Lord, what a <laughs> Very good. Uh, OK, it's time to meet my next guest. Uh, with starring roles in Line of Duty, Rocket Man, The Virtues and The Irishman, this man has been one of the biggest stars of 2019. Please welcome Mr Stephen Graham! <laughs> Here you go. Hi. 
You've just met everybody, but uh, but Tom Hanks, you know of old. We uh, we we worked together just uh, just two just, years ago. Yeah, recently. The film that will be out in May. It's uh, called Greyhound. It's oh, this is the Greyhound. Oh, yes. so that's all made. That's all oh, done. Oh, yeah. Oh, there yeah. we are. Tom. Look at us. Yeah. But then before that, Band of Brothers. Oh, you... that's right. Years well, ago. How young were you when you got cast? Well, look, 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 look at that baby face. Oh, look at him. Yeah. Oh, last year. Yes. Kids do this to you. Were you just just out of drama school? when you got that gig? I think I was, actually. Yeah, it wasn't It wasn't long before. Like, yeah, about... It was 19... 2000, I think. 2000? I think it was, it was that 2000, long ago. Yeah. I think I'd just done Snatch, yeah. so... Well, look, uh, we've got lots to talk about, but let's start with your latest TV project, which is White House Farm. It is coming to ITV in January. And now, this is a true crime story that I think a lot of people will remember. Yeah, yeah, um, I think it, it was in the mid-'80s. Yeah, mid-'80s, yeah. Um, and it's... It's kind of a strange one because I think it's 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 there's a new kind of case about it now, isn't it? I think it's been reopened or well, he seems to be making appeals appeal. all the time, all the time. Yeah, constantly. this is uh, Jeremy Vamber. Yeah, um, and it's about you know it's 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 the true story of of that whole incident and stuff like that. But you'd have to be kind of careful what you say because I don't want to get in trouble. Yes, because... you have made an entire television series about it now, so uh, <laughs> I feel. I <laughs> the yeah. genie's out of the bottle. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but my character, my character's a police officer, and um, I worked with Mark Addy, who was lovely. He was absolutely. And you, so that your DCI Taft Jones. Taft he, Jones. Yeah. Are, are they kind of an amalgamation of, of policemen? Or are they actual policemen? He was an actual policeman, um, and he was the head of the investigation. Do you know what I mean? So it was his operation, really. Um, and then he gets pushed aside, and I had to do a Welsh accent, which I tried Ooh. really hard. It How was, was that? Tricky. I don't know. Well, which we're about part, to find which, out. Which part of Wales? <laughs> oh, <laughs> we can see now. Yes. Right. yes. No, uh, this, uh, this is your character, DCI Taft Jones, and uh, you, you. Yeah. Anyway, it's <laughs> stuff. <something. laughs> it's stuff. 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 Line of Duty, obviously you yeah. were kind of you stole Line of Duty. You were so good in that. I oh, think. Uh, but then uh, Irishman, which is still streaming on uh, Netflix, yeah. and mm. uh, Martin Scorsese. Yeah, you knew Martin Scorsese from Gangs of New York. Yeah. Uh, but that wasn't enough to get you into the Irishman. You had to meet more people. Yeah, I met Robert De Niro, which was which was lovely. Did you have to fly to over to meet him? Yeah, I flew over to meet him and just had a little. We had a we had a sit down and a conversation. It was very surreal. Do you know what I mean? These are my heroes and Tom as well, the people who we grew up with. Do you know what I mean? So you never Tom. in your. <laughs> 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 well, you never went to school. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Now, if I sing a song <laughs> to, to someone who grew up with me, what does De, does he does De Niro just sit there and say, Are "You talking to me"? <laughs> no, he's, he's very lovely. He, he was really nice. Do you know what I mean? I was extremely nervous, as you can imagine. What, did you have a meal or a drink or something? What, what a couple it? of cups of coffee. I was only supposed to be there for like twenty minutes, and we were there for two hours. So. Do you know what I mean? So it the was... meeting went well? Yeah, it went, yeah. It went, it went, <laughs> and he's in it, yeah. so yes. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And Joe Pesci, now, because he hadn't worked for... He sort of retired, and he came yes. back for this. Yes. And he sounds like quite an interesting now, man. That was a different meeting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a little bit... Mm. I mean, let's... Awkward's not the word. I, it was my first couple of days and that, and I was in, in the trailer, and, and they, they knocked and they said, Mr Pesci would like to meet you. So I was like... Okay, do you know what I mean? Uh, casino, Raging Bull, you know, Home Alone. This is Joe Pesci. It's yeah. an idol. So I'm like, okay, this really excited, really nervous, and I, and I go, and he's sat outside his trailer, and it's quite cold, and he's there, and he's got a big cigar, and he goes, sit down. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like okay. And he goes, where are you from? I went, I'm from England, Liverpool, and he went, you're not Italian. <laughs> and I went. No, 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 no. I felt... I, I apologise for not being... <laughs> he, was like, he was like, OK, OK, um, you know, you best do this right. And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give it my best. <laughs> and then he goes to me, and this the worst thing as an actor you can ever hear. He went, I wanted your part. <laughs> and I was and I, I did, and I was like... I went, no, but you, you, your, part's, is, your part's massive, <laughs> you know what I mean? You've got loads to do, you know? he was like... And then he said to me, I knew Tony. 
And I'm just thinking, OK, this, uh, can this get any worse? You know what I mean? <laughs> and he was like, so make sure you do a good job. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> OK, all right, thanks, lovely to meet you. <laughs> OK. <laughs> <laughs> I did a couple of days, and then he, he's come up to me a few days later after I've done some stuff, and he's gone, they've all said you're very good, they've all said you're doing really well. Oh. Do you want to come and have something to eat? And I was like, yeah, all right, y'all. <laughs> and, then, and then we'd be talking and stuff, and he'd go, why'd you have to talk like that? And I was like, what do you mean? He went, just talk how your character talks, then I can understand you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry, Joe. OK. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do that, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, talking, talking about uh, great American actors, this is so weird. I didn't realise they were making this show till this recently, but uh, Matthew Reese, he, he <laughs> was in the last ever episode of Columbo. Yeah. Is that right? I closed it. Closed it yeah. down. Yeah. They, they, they got cancelled after I played the villain. Look, isn't that amazing? Oh, well, shit. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Well, you do Just this? one more thing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the first time he says that, you kind of go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who did you play? The bad guy? Did you do Yeah, it? I did. I was the murderer. You were yeah, the murderer. Was the murderer. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and now, Peter was kind of directing you in a way. Yes, he, he liked to rehearse uh, quite intensely, you know, prior. So we did about almost two weeks of rehearsal. And in the script, it says he's from... The, 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 the murderer is from London, possibly the East End, and, you know, East End Underworld. I was like, all oh, right, this is brilliant, cos I'm going to go to America. If, if my Cockney accent's a bit off, I'll be fine. So, you know, you watch a few, you know, Guy Ritchie movies on the plane, I was like, I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna pull the wall over here, eh? And I'm giving it the full, oh, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that like one long con uh, battle. No concert's going, oh, hey, <laughs> for <laughs> And then he goes, yeah, let me, let me stop you a minute. Um, where are you from? <laughs> I went, oh, I, uh, I'm, I'm from Cardiff in South Wales. I mean, why don't you play him as someone from Cardiff and say... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm so terribly sorry. I can't quite do a Cockney accent, Mr Falk. I'm so sorry. So, yeah, so the last ever murderer was... Uh, was uh, from Cardiff and South Wales. Because, <laughs> <laughs> Marty, you do an extraordinary thing, of course, that flipping between the German and mm -hmm. the English. The... But is English your... Is that easier for you than German, or is German easier? Well, uh, at the moment, German is easier because I've heard so much different accent in this country, and I really have to concentrate to understand everyone. Like Stephen. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. It is, and everybody sounds so different. And we had on strictly Krim, uh, Chris Ramsey. I don't know where he's from, but I was just like, what? <laughs> what? what? Write it down. <laughs> you think it's really easy because it's English, like we grew up on English, yeah. but apparently it's not. No. <laughs> because Tom, you've you've done some accent work, haven't you? Oh uh, yes, some. Yeah, uh, like you, Cloud, Cloud Atlas. You did. I did. Yeah, yeah. William Conacher, our our dialect coach, kept saying, "No, that's not it." <laughs> so, so I was trying to play somebody cocky, and it seemed like every one of our sessions would go like this. And I, all right, start with the dialogue. Oh, oh it's, a, it's a bloody waste of time, this is. <laughs> you know what I want to do? I want to smash him right in the face. And all I want is a room somewhere. <laughs> all away from the cold. That's why I'm channeling Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> <laughs> Not my dialogue. But you also, you, didn't you teach Mr. Yeah. Hank Scouse? Well, he, he tried a little bit, yeah. Because <laughs> no, no. when I'm on the phone to Anna... He is the on kids, the phone all the time. Only <laughs> in the chair, no, in makeup. Uh, the chair and makeup. How are you? I love, I love your loads. <laughs> <laughs> I love your loads. I love your loads. <laughs> his, his family had a, his family had a long-standing holiday that he wanted to be released from work with, and his kids sent the most adorable video yeah. to our director. Yeah. And they were just like, oh, oh, we were, we hope that you will release our daddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we know that you have him for possible rain cover shots, but <laughs> if there's any way you can let him come so we can have a traditional holiday. Yeah. And then, then the family pet came through and your daughter said, Oops, I just tread on the cat. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Grace did, yeah, Grace did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I went on the holiday. Oh, you went on the yeah. holiday? Let's bring on my next guest. This man is one of the sporting heroes of the year, coming back from defeat to reclaim the biggest prize in boxing. Please welcome the two-time heavyweight champion of the world, <laughs> Anthony Joshua! <laughs> Hello! 
Thank you very much. Uh, congratulations. Wow. Now, I, luckily, I, I, I sometimes <laughs> struggle uh, interviewing like, a boxer, but, I, but there are people who know what they're doing. Uh, Stephen, you follow boxing, don't you? Yeah, my, this fella, massive, yeah. Thank you. I noticed He's that. a legend. <laughs> <laughs> Not just in stature, but in ability and yeah. technique. He's, he's amazing. He's absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah. And I was uh, actually really nervous meeting him, if I'm honest. Why? Because you're a legend. No, I'm not. You are. <laughs> no, you are a legend. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Because when, when, when last we met, you had the four belts and you were going to fight, mm. and then... <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. 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 Very quickly, what went wrong? I just got beat by the better man. But, Honestly, but, I just got beat by the better man. Really? <laughs> Do you know what it is? I feel like if you always look back, you can always find a reason as to why you could have done things better. Mm. But I think I just got to take it on the chin and just say, it is what it is, and I corrected it the next time. No, exactly. Yeah? Yeah. We can laugh about it now. <laughs> <laughs> You've got them back. Uh, <laughs> so when you meet Andy Ruiz again, yeah. what's changed? Are you better or is he worse? Um, <laughs> he's better. I'm the, he's I don't want to... Yeah. yeah, I think I'm a lot better now. He was more tactical. You might be yeah. better, that was okay. but, that, but, yeah. but just looking at a picture... Yeah, all right, yeah, I see what looking we're going to do Looking at a picture, you. you look better, but Andy... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. there is more ruins to hit, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> the surface area has increased. What happened there? So, when I had a lot of time to study him, so you're talking about Ruiz, yeah? Yes, what yeah. happened to him? So, I studied him, and then he was saying that he wanted to lose weight, etc. And then he f realised that when you lose a lot of weight, you may gain speed, but you may lose power. Mm -hmm. And I think that he wanted to put on the weight, so when he punches, he's punching with so much power that he'll probably knock me out. And that's what I listened to. But then after the fight, when he lost, it was like, oh, I put on too much weight and et cetera, et cetera. OK. Maybe an excuse. Yeah, well, he wasn't as humble in defeat as he was. Yeah, oh. just, just, just take it as it comes, isn't it? Yeah, it is what well, it is. He's won now. He's got four back again now. <laughs> if I didn't win, would you have had me on your show? No. <laughs> What would we talk about? <laughs> I don't know, the New Year? Christmas? <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> he said, what, what happened again? <laughs> <laughs> so, still, no belts. <laughs> uh, yeah, you had four. <laughs> you had four. How out of shape can you be? Just sending food parcels to Andy Ruiz. But, and, and tell me this, presumably now the focus is back. Uh, on number five. You've got the four. Yes, back again. Hang on to them. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so, <laughs> back to get number five. Yeah. But you don't know who you're going to fight yet. No. Cause... Because the fifth belt is... Uh, well, yeah. when, uh, that's being decided in February? Well, it's going to be decided, yeah, New Year. But I'm going to be in training anyway, so I'm still, like, up in the air and what to do and so on. OK, so it's going to be either Tyson Fury or, um, Daytona Wilder. Wilder. So, between the two of them, if you were a, <laughs> a, a betting man, mm -hmm. uh, who do you think you'll be fighting? I don't know, I don't know. Tom, if you're my manager... Uh, I'd go by the colour of gloves. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you're not my manager. <laughs> If you want my expertise, <laughs> uh, Stephen Graham, you follow boxing. Who? who what do you think? Yeah. Who? What do you think? I think any any one of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a real fighting man. That's a real fighting man. You know what I mean? Anyone? Yeah. Any one of them. It doesn't matter. They're do you, both, do you, you care? You do you care? That. You can't call that fight again. Yeah. So, but mm -hmm. any one of them. Well, the last time it was a draw. So. Yeah. yeah. But so you don't do you don't care or do you have a preference? The preference would be the champion who is Deontay Wilder, because. It's a championship fight, but Tyson Fury's so talented as well, mm. and it's the best of British, so why not? I would fight anyone, so um, either one of them is good. Not you, but I'm doing that. Like... <laughs> <laughs> the way you looked at me there was like... <laughs> also, I don't have a belt. I don't, don't waste your time. Uh, don't waste your time. Uh, well, listen, their fight's in February, yeah. so how quickly do you think it'll happen where you're going for that fifth belt? Will it be in 2020, the fifth belt? That will be the dream. 
that would be the dream. So they're February. I'll probably go end of March. Win, let's say, providing I win, and I put my prayers in, and the champion wins, and why not? I know. Well, I hope you do, because then you could be a guest on the show again. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 I should add, I should add that because it is New Year's Eve, uh, you're doing something special for us to bring in the New Year a little while. Okay. 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 So uh, stay tuned for that. But before that, it's time for music. Now, 2019 saw the triumphant return of the Spice Girls, and now one fifth of them is back here performing our brand new single along with the stars of Sync the Pink. Please welcome Melanie C. <laughs> Thank you very much, and uh, thanks for everyone who sings pink. Thank you very much. Yay! Uh, have a seat for the stool down the end there. You're good there. Yeah, nice. I feel like um, I feel like I'm on the children's table. You know. Chris? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, listen, that single is out uh, now. Yeah. Yes, high heels. I'm playing it on the radio. I do. Yes. Yeah, yes, I have. Thank you. And Thank now you have. Some, now, do you know Stephen from Liverpool or? No? No. No, I know Stephen from... Well, we have some connections. Yes. yes. So, Stephen is from Kirby, <laughs> which is a part of Liverpool where my dad and all my dad's family are from, and still live, actually. OK. Still live in Kirby. And, yeah, and my dad and Stephen's uncle, Uncle Tony, yeah. used to work at the Otis together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not know that? I didn't know about you know, where can an Did Uncle no. Tony not say, I know a Spice Girls dad? <laughs> no. What do oh. they talk about? I think <laughs> just, just, just the lifts, was not he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. lifts, where they make oh, lifts. The, oh, yeah. right. Yeah. And... Yeah. Because you've met my dad, I think, haven't you? Because you know yeah, I have, yeah. football with yeah. Liverpool. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I have met his dad. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did he mention his daughter was a Spice Girl? <laughs> 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 it is. OK, yeah, good. <laughs> uh, now, but I hear, I heard you talking and you said you really enjoyed working with the, uh, the girls from Sink the Pink. Yeah. yeah. How did you meet the girls from Sink the Pink? Do you know, I was introduced to Sink the Pink about two years ago and I went down to a club night. It's a huge... A creative collective. They're absolutely incredible people. And I went down to perform and just fell in love with everybody. And then we did the Mighty Hoopla, which is a big festival they put on in London every summer. And that was the first time I worked with the drag queens on stage. And we got such a great reaction from the audience. We were like, we've got to do something else. So this year we went out and we did a world tour of Prides, which was incredible. Wow. And was that tour easier or harder than the Spice Girls tour? Well, there's <laughs> less divas in Sink the Pink. There's <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably less makeup. <laughs> what about you? What about you, Melcy? Is there going to be um, new music from you apart from the yes, single? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Really busy year next year. Loads of new music, um, lots of travelling as well. There's a great international fan base from the Spice Girls days. So I get to, to go out and perform all over the world, which is what I love to do. All right, well, I'm sure people will be dancing tonight to high heels. Uh, Melanie C and the stars of the <laughs> Right. That is nearly it. But before we go, uh, just time for a visit to the big red chair. Who's there? <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi, what's your name? Samantha. Samantha. Where are you from, Samantha? New Zealand. Of New Zealand, home of the story. Is that really, <laughs> is that really weird? What? It's not really it does, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where have I gone? Wait, 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 wait. You better sleep. You better sleep. No, you can lean across. Do you want to swap? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Where'd you stand? OK, OK. <laughs> uh, Samantha, I fear this won't last very long, so uh, speak as quickly as you like. All right. When I had my first job out of uni, I had a call from my manager saying, just to say hi. Oh. So Samantha... <laughs> And he was just going, it works! <laughs> I was riveted. I'll no. never know. Well, how was it again? Why was it ever kind, 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 k
Hi. Hi. You look a little nervous now. <laughs> we, I think we've sedated Stephen yeah. Graham. Can yeah. I get through your story? What's your name? It's Amy. And where are you from? I'm from Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. Amy from what part of Northern Ireland? Uh, Bangor. Oh, Bangor. Lovely. Yeah. It's a seaside resort. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how did you go with the story? So, um, I studied music at university. Oh, yes. And we were getting ready for the end of your concert. I play the French horn, so I had a big solo coming up. Of course you did. Um, I stupidly went out the night before, um, got very drunk, and the next day um, we were getting ready for the concert. My solo was coming up, and I really did not feel OK. Um, my solo began, mm -hmm. and I knew I was going to be sick. So Looking around everywhere to see no, where I could be know, sick, I had to tip the French horn and oh. throw up into the bed. Yeah, walk. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had some supplementary questions. I did like? Did she then play? No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. good, good thing she wasn't playing the clarinet. Do we have another one? One more. Why one not? More. New Year's Eve. Come, yeah. Come on. Hello. Hi. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hey. I changed. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come for the ringing in of the new year. Now, Anthony, the last time you were on the show, mm -hmm. you were sadly robbed mm -hmm. of the title of World Fairground Bell Dinger. <laughs> so, uh, we are <laughs> going to give you that. No, you were upset. I remember you were very upset. I know. So, uh, yeah, no, it was robbed. I think it was Judy Dench. <laughs> <laughs> So we're giving you the chance to regain your yeah. title tonight yeah. and ring in the new year at the same time. So yeah. if you'd like to come over here okay. to, to, to the to the machine, yes. okay. Now, so here's the thing. Now, now wait, 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 wait. Before before Anthony has a go, does anyone want to have a go? Anybody want to go? Tom, Matthew, Stephen. Oh, Matthew's going. Okay. You got me a go. Okay, Matthew Reese, tell me a go. Here we go. I, I said yes before I saw the surface area of the knob. <laughs> what do you call that? <laughs> a nail or a knob? What it's is a, that? It's a knob. It's a knob. Oh, it's a, do it yeah. for Wales. This is... They keep saying that. <laughs> That's <laughs> tiny. Yeah. That's tiny. Well, no, if you miss it, you can go again. Oh, okay. Yeah, Philip. Do it from this side. Yes, this side, yes. This side. Okay, here we go. Matthew Reese, hoping to bring in 2020. Here we go. Here we go. Ha, ha. Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> oh, my God. Right, I feel like I need Watch to... Watch it! <laughs> 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 OK, it's time, it's time. Anthony Joshua, show them how it's done. Yeah. Anthony Joshua, showing them how it's done. Uh, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Special good show business guy. Till then, happy new year, everybody!